Good morning everyone, welcome back to the 120th. A short one for you today, just running through uh, different types of film. Um, so this is specific, I mean this is the 120th. So this is mostly about 120 and just explaining introduction to 120 film, medium format film, what it is, how it works, what's different about it. Almost everybody starts life on 35mm. Um, and the, the transition to 120 can be a bit uh, daunting. This is in response to a couple of questions I've had on the channel uh, of people asking, how do you know how far to wind on? Um, does it wind, do, do you wind back at the end of the film? I've got a few cameras to show you. I've got a few films to show you. And I'm going to wreck some films. And I've got some films that I've already wrecked, which we can unroll and see what's in there. So to start, I'm going to give a bit of a bit of history on film. Roll film first came in, I think, around the turn of the century, around uh, late 19th, early 20th century. There was a 116 film that was brought out slightly before 120, but only by a few years. And then 1903, I think, saw the first 120 roll film. Common misconception, 120, it is not 120 millimetre film. 120 is the designation, in the same way that 35mm film is not technically called 35mm film, it's actually 135. That's the designation. For reference, here's your 35mm film. We've all seen one of those, we know what it looks like. It is a light, tight canister with film in it that you reel all the way out. This one's dead anyway, I've, I've, I've destroyed this already. You reel all the way out inside your camera and then at the end of it, you roll it all the way back in again. This is 120, the fairly common and amazing Ilford HP 5 Plus. So I'll just open this. I'm not gonna destroy this film because I've got a film that I've already destroyed there, that I've already exposed to light by accident. Inside is gonna be often foil sealed, not always. Open the plastic seal and this is what it looks like inside. It is a roll of paper held together by a bit of tape, usually with the um, what the film is on it and usually with the word unexposed. This is an unused but already destroyed roll of film. So here's what you get when you unroll a 120 film. Black lined backing paper. Now this is kind of a matte black thing. Um, and I, when I uh, first started using 120 film, I was a bit concerned that, you know, that this was something sensitive and that I, I shouldn't be, um, <clears throat> I should be trying to protect that, but it is just black paper. So then you're gonna feed that into your camera, you're gonna roll that out, and it's not until there, that is the film. That is the actual light sensitive emulsion that's starting to come out there. Okay, and then and you can see the backing paper is still on there. It is taped fairly securely to the backing paper. If you're developing yourself and you unravel this in a dark bag so that you can put it onto a spool, you'll have to tear that tape off and it's pretty secure actually that tape. That is what 120 film looks like inside. Just a quick run through, so the, the, the other film formats that you might come across, just so I can clear this desk. So first of all, how to tell if your what your camera takes. This is a Practica 4, pretty old camera. Um, so not all old cameras will take 120 film. The, uh, 35 mil was introduced in the early 1930s. So you will get some pretty old cameras that, that will take 35 mil film. Uh, and here's an example of one, Practica 4, 1950s. You can see the sprockets here. 120 film does not have sprockets, as you saw in that. It's just a plain film. Um, <clears throat> so if it's got the sprockets and it looks about the right size, chances are it's a 35, it, it takes a 35mm film. If the camera that you've got looks like this inside, in a camera that takes 120 film, there will be a space for the film to go and there will be a space for what's called a take-up spool and there is no rewinding. The film runs from the spool that you put in onto the take-up spool, and at the end of it, there is an empty spool here that you put in, and the, the take-up spool is now has your film completely wound around it, and you're gonna take it off the top, and you're gonna tape it shut again, and then that goes off for developing. You take out the empty spool, and you stick it in the top, and that becomes your next take-up spool. 
So you then stick in another film, it winds from this spool onto that spool, and then you take out that spool, goes to developing, empty spool goes to the top, and so on and so forth. The take up spool is always where your winding knob is, so that it is pulling the film. <clears throat> and very often your um, wind on knob will be you, that that will lift out or pull out or something to, to allow for the take up spool to go in. Uh, it doesn't on this one actually, it's the other side that comes out, but achieves the same ends. So that is 120 film. It is more sensitive than 35 mil to being accidentally exposed to light. So you have to be a bit more careful with it. You have to make sure that it's wound tight. Make sure that you tape it at the other end. And I then keep mine in a light proof box after that, just to be completely on the safe side. I haven't really had any problems, but it's definitely something you hear about. People who have problems with it where they haven't wound uh, tight enough onto the take up spool um, and they get little light leaks. But that, by the way, is the take up, is a, is a spool. That's what's in here. If you unroll it completely and pull it off the, the thing that it's wound around, you'll find one of those. The, the spool that your film is on is exactly the same as a take-up spool. They're all the same. There's just spools. When you get a medium format camera, often it will have one of these already inside it. It has come out of a film. Um, it's not some sort of special um, uh, attachment that is a take-up spool. Um, I've seen some people asking questions about, oh, do they send them back to you? No, they don't send them back because you'll get another one in your... Um, in your in the next film you put in. You can buy those if you want to, but bear in mind you'll only ever need one. Uh, if you start developing your own film, you'll end up with thousands of the damn things and they'll be everywhere. This is another type of film that you may come across that is still being made. You can see I'll hold it next to a 120. It is smaller. Uh, this, this one is a 127. It's exactly the same setup as a 120. Um, backing paper and inside there is film taped to it, but the film stock in here is 40 millimeters wide, four centimeters. And often you'll find that 127 cameras will take uh, four by four, four centimeter by four centimeter frames. Um, and we have a 127 camera here, if I can remember how to get into it. There we go. And there we go. So exactly the same setup. Over this side, we have a take up spool. And this is where your film would go, and it winds from one to the other. The, the spool that is inside this one then becomes a take-up spool. Take it out, put it on the other side, put a new film in, wind from one to the other. But take smaller 4x4 four four frames. That is an Annie 44. I haven't actually shot with that yet. I'm looking forward to it. Another question that I've been asked is, how do you know how far to wind on? Okay, so there are two ways that this might happen. I'll just give you a little demonstration of how this works with the Yashica 635. So here is your spool, empty spool from the inside of a film. We're going to stick it in here. Right, so we now have a take up, take up spool at the top, space at the bottom. We're going to take our film. We are going to slot that in at the bottom like this. Um, the how this all works will vary from camera to camera, but the um, the essence of what is happening will remain. So here we go. We're going to stretch this up onto the take-up spool. All right, and quite often I'll just put a bit, put a, put a bit of pressure on the um, the film as we wind on, just to make sure it's nice and tight across the back here. Now, with the 635, we're going to roll on until we see these arrows. These arrows are your um, uniform markers that you will line up. If you, uh, as with this um, Yashica 635, there's a red mark here. These markers are to line up with the red mark if you have a camera that does not have a window in the back. So you line up the uh, markers with the red dot. This is when you would close your back. So here we go, we're gonna do this. We're gonna close the back. We're gonna wind on. And we're gonna keep turning this until it clicks. And when it clicks, it'll be lined up with frame one. There we go, it shows one in the window. And we're lined up with frame one. We would then take a photo, wind on, click. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open the back. Um, 
This may stop it clicking, I'm not sure about it. It'll show you what happens. Open the back. Now obviously I would have just, if this film wasn't already wrecked, I would have just wrecked it. But I'm gonna do this for you. We're gonna have a watch and we're gonna see what happens. So let's see if it still clicks. It's just reset the counter. So this is now, so as you can see, the film is going from, the, from, your, from your film onto the take up spool. And I'm just gonna wind it all the way through. Now, this is where you get to the end. You've, so this is frame 12. You're gonna wind past frame 12. You start to get markers showing that you're at the end of the film. This is where you're at the end of a film, you've shot your last frame, you might normally rewind. But this is 120. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep winding in the same direction and you're gonna pull it all the film off here so that it's all wound around the take-up spool. Here we go. Then you'll get a little bit of tension as you get to the end of it and you're gonna keep turning until it pulls clear of the take-up, of the, of the film spool. And then you keep turning, you keep turning, keep turning. And now it's all wound around here. So then, you are gonna, however it works with your camera, you are gonna pull it out, if you can. There we go. Put the camera aside. And this is what you now have. You have a uh, fully wound round here with a sticky tab. Now on Ilford Films, as this is, this was a Pan F that we now, we now know. And on Ilford Films, you have to lick them to stick them down. Some of them, you, they peel away, you know, varies from brand to brand. So you're gonna, and it obviously says exposed on this end, it says exposed on the sticker. So in theory, you can't make the mistake of going the wrong way around. You're gonna fold over the tab. You're gonna pull it as tight as you can. You're gonna not do this under a very bright light. And then, oops, I just caught that in there. And then I'm not gonna stick this down because I wanna unravel this again. But you would then lick this, wrap it all the way around and stick it tight. And there you have an exposed film ready to go off for developing. The other way to know exactly how, how far to wind on a medium format 120 film camera is this, or some variation of this. So, here we have an Agfa Isolette red window. Kershaw 110, red window. Very common for these, uh, these cameras to have windows in the back, and here is why. Now this isn't actually a piece, uh, film, this is just the backing paper that I've wound back onto a spool to, uh, to show you. You'll see it starts off gray, and then it turns white. And once it turns white, so this is actually, so I've, I've wound this back onto a spool in reverse. So I'm gonna pull it all the way out, take it off the spool, and show you what it looks like. So, and we wind on, we wind on, and eventually we're gonna see in our window, you're gonna see these little dotted circles. This is Ilford film, this is what Ilford film looks like. And then you are gonna get in your red window, you are gonna see a number. When the red window lands on the number one, you are on your first frame. You then take that frame and you wind until you see the dotted circles, dotted circles, and then you see a number two, and so on and so forth. Now, the observant amongst you will have noticed that there are three sets of numbers on this film. 120 film, a medium format film, takes photos are taken in three common sizes. There could be any number of sizes, but three common sizes. 645, which is six centimeters by four and a half centimeters. Six by six, which is six centimeters by six centimeters. Six by nine, which is six centimeters by nine centimeters. The Ashika 635 shoots square frames, six by six. Bronica S2A, six by six. Agfa Isolette, six by six square frames. Hawkeye Model B, number two Hawkeye Model B, early box camera, shoots six by nine. And that's pretty common for box cameras. So the Agfa Synchro box that I reviewed was a six by nine, lovely big wide negatives. Uh, so on the isolate, the film rolls from here to here. 
on the Hawkeye, the film rolls from here to here. And what you're going to notice is that as far as where the film will be oriented, the, the red windows are in a different place. Okay, let's now superimpose, as it were, a, uh, a bit of film as it would roll here. And what we can see is that there are a set of numbers that are down the middle. And that is all you're going to see in here, is the middle numbers. You're not going to see the numbers on the right-hand side. You're not going to see the numbers on the left-hand side. You'll only see the middle ones. And that is because this shoots 6 by 6 and the middle numbers are 6 by 6. The middle numbers count to 12. The top numbers count to 16. The bottom numbers only count to 8. And that, is, that corresponds to your different frame sizes. So you will get, if you're shooting 6 by 9 frames, you will get 8 shots from a 120 film. So let's again superimpose this on the back of your Hawkeye camera. This is what's going to be inside. Red window is roughly where my finger is. I can feel it. And these are the numbers it's showing you. That is what is, it is helping you line up. I don't have a 645 camera. Um, but if I did, the red window would be on the right hand side. The red window would be on the left hand side. And it would be showing you these numbers that run down this side of the backing paper. Don't stress about the 120, really easy to use. Uh, no more complicated than a 35mm. Just you know, take you five minutes to get your head around the fact that you're not going to wind it back in again. You're going to wind from one to the other, and at the other end, you're going to wind, pull it on as tight as you can bold the corner and uh, they all come with a, a sticky tab at the far end of the of the paper so that you can seal it again at the other end. Hope this has helped you um, understand what 120 film is and a few other film formats. Don't forget to like and subscribe. What's next? Uh, Kershaw 110. I've been threatening this for a long time. I keep saying that's going to be the next film and it never bloody is. I'm also going to be doing some self portraits on the large format. Um, I have a new large format camera coming. It's not here yet. I, uh, I have all the materials. I'm going to build a pinhole lens for the large format camera. But this one will be next, I think. Kershaw 110 folder, 1950s, super simple camera. Um, I've put a roll of film through it. So let's see how that came out. And whether I managed to get any decent pictures from it. Look at that. It's in great nick, isn't it? Beautiful camera. All right. Um, see you next time. Bye.